All right, so moving on to 8.2, talking about functions. Functions are so incredibly important in math. If you, honestly, if, until you get to the point that you're looking at really theoretical math, you'd be ending up, you'd be dealing with functions all the way through. Um, crazy important, crazy important in application stuff. Um, stock market works on functions. Um, when you go to buy a house or something, your interest is all going to be working off the functions. Uh, intelligence deals with functions. It's it's everything. So, what is a function? So, got your definition there. Function is a relation. So, our set of ordered pairs, a relation. For each element x in the domain, there is exactly one value of y in the range. So the idea here is if there's more than one y for the x, then it's not a function. If there's not one y, then that x isn't in the domain. So every x in the domain, there's going to be just that singular y that goes with it. So in other words, if we write out our ordered pairs, no two ordered pairs are going to have the same first element. You can have the second element repeated many times as you like. It could be the same second element all the way through. It's the first one that matters when it comes to whether or not it's a function. So if I look at that first one, one, two, one, four, two, eight, three, six. So you might be able to tell already whether or not this one's a function. So let's do that cloud chart diagram that we did the other day. I'm going to get all my x's over here, not doing any repeats. So I've got one appears twice, you can just write it once. Two, three, two, three. I've got two, four, six, and eight. Two, four, six, and eight. Again, order doesn't matter. I'm just being in particular about having it in the vertical order. So drawing our lines across, we have one, two, so one, two, one, four, so eight, eight, and three, six. So we probably could tell whether or not it was a function back here from our definition. But the fact that one in our graph, in our um, cloud chart, has two lines coming off of it, tells us this is not going to be a function. We have an x paired up with more than one y. Exactly one y. We can pick that up here. One appears in the x's twice, so this must not be a function. So let's take a look at that next one. We have 1, 2, 2, 2, and 3, 4. 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 4. You may already, again, be able to tell whether or not this one's a function. So we have 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 4. Again, I'm not going to bother with repeats. I've got 1, 2. Line of one, two, that's two, 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 three, four, three. So this one is a function. Remember, we only care if the x's are paired with multiple y's. The fact that this two has two lines going to it doesn't matter to us at all when it comes to a function. Because each one of these only has one line, we're good to go, we know it's going to be a function. So remember, when it comes to functions, only the x matters. And so when we look at the graphs, we have a real slick way of doing that. It's called the vertical line test. So let's pull up these graphs here. The idea behind the vertical line test is if I were to run a nice vertical line, across my graph, how many times does the graph intersect it at, a, at one time? So if I'm looking, dragging this vertical line across here, for most of this graph, 
the vertical line crosses the graph twice at the same time. That tells me it's not a function. It has to only cross once at any given time. And that makes sense with our definition of functions here. If I have, take a look at this x here, a positive 3, well, I have a couple of y's going with it. One above the x-axis and one below. So the vertical line test makes sure that makes sure that, that doesn't happen. It's a good way to check if we have an x going to multiple y's. If I look at this next one, dragging my vertical line across, it always only crosses it at one point at a time. At no point is my vertical line hitting the graph in two separate places. Sure, we're going up and down. Sure, if I did a horizontal line, it would cross a whole bunch of times. But I'm not doing horizontal, I'm doing vertical, because we care about the x's, not the y's. So this one, let's get this, this is not a function. This one is a function. In fact, if you remember your trig from geometry, this is the graph of sine of x. So thinking about this circle, well, taking my vertical line across it, there are lots of points where it's crossing that circle more than once at a time. The circle is not a function. Which is kind of a good thing to point out. We have equations we can write for the graph of a circle. But just because we can write an equation for it does not mean that it's a function. All right. Flip your page on over. We're going to talk some function notation. So we do write lots of equations to represent our functions. We can represent our functions as graphs, as sets of ordered pairs, or as equations. And equations tend to be one of the most common ones alongside graphs. So I can write my equation in terms of y the way we have them. y equals 2x minus 3. That's your slope-intercept form. You're used to that. So we know that this is going to be a function because slope-intercept form, we know it's linear. If it's a line, there's no way our vertical line test is ever going to cross it multiple times. Every time I plug x in here, there's only one y value that could possibly come out. I'm not going to have this spitting out multiple y's. And so another way to write this is our function notation. So the way we read this is f of x, the function with an input x, is 2x minus 3. So your f of x is one big unit. We're going to keep them together. And it's pretty much replacing your y here. If you notice in big bold letters on your notes, it says careful, we are not multiplying f and x. This is not f times x. I've seen this mistake so many times. Uh, I TA calculus in college and I still have students doing that. This is f of x. We're not multiplying these by, when we talk about composition of functions, we're not going to say this is f multiplied by x and throw an x on the end. It is f of x. So, like we say there, this is the function being evaluated at the input x. We'll talk about exactly what that means a little bit down the line. Actually, in like two steps here. So, if I evaluate this function at x equal to 2. Well, we said that this is f of x, f, the function evaluated with the input x. So I can rewrite this and say, what is my function f evaluated at 2? And as wild as that might sound, it's really just a matter of replacing this x with a 2. I replace this x with a 2, so I'm going to replace this x with a 2. And now I can solve it. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 is 1. So my function, my function evaluated at the input 2, is 1.
just swapping this x out for 2. I'm going to take every x I see, swap it out for 2, see what I get. And so this is one of our older pairs, x of 2, y of 1. So if I ask to find f of negative 4, with the same function, well, I replaced that x with a negative 4, so let's replace this x with a negative 4. We have 2 times negative 4, negative 8, minus 3, and negative 11. So my function evaluated at the input negative 4 is negative 11. I have the ordered pair with negative 4 and negative 11. All right. So, let's take a look at some more examples. If I'm going to do this for x equal to 0, I'll leave x equal to 2 for you, and I'll do x equal to 3. So, same idea as before. If I want to know what my function is with an input of 0, so x equals to 0, then x equals 0, so I swap them out. I swapped that x out for 0, I'm going to swap this x out for 0. I have 0 plus 1, the absolute value of 1 is 1. My function evaluated at the input 0 is 1. The ordered pair that I, that I would have is 0, 1. And do the same thing for negative 3. F of negative 3. I swap to this out, this x out for negative 3. Let's swap that one out for negative 3. Let me solve this. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Plus 1 is negative 11. The absolute value of negative 11 is positive 11. So my function evaluated at the input negative 3 is positive 11. So I have the ordered pair, negative 3, 11. Alright. So I'm going to leave x equal to 2 to you. And I'm going to do 1 from this next step. Let's do h of negative 2. So, just like x and y and z and all of those are different variables that we can swap out and they all serve the same purpose, I don't have to call my function f. In this case, we call it h. It's just the name of the function going on there. So we do that, so if we have multiple functions that we're talking about at once, we know which one we're talking about. We talk a little bit. So let's do h of negative 2. h of negative 2. I swapped this x out for negative 2. So let's swap all of these out for negative 2. So notice I put the parentheses on this negative 2. Because that entire x is squared, so I need the entire negative 2 to be squared. Minus 2 times negative 2 plus swapping that x out for negative 2. I'm going to evaluate this and say got 4 plus 4 plus 4. We have 12. So I have the ordered pair, negative 2, 12. My function h, evaluated at input negative 2, is positive 12. Alright, so that's it for our intro to functions. We'll get you next time.